What's cracking, everybody? Zerfell Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Quillfish in the Great League and why I think it's one of the best safe swaps that we've had since sliced bread. Sliced Lantern? I don't know. I was trying to make a joke there, and I kind of missed. But anyway, we're going to have Quillfish as the star of the show today. And so the reason why I start some of these videos out without any Pokemon on here is because I want to be able to kind of go through my process of why I picked what I did and built the team, right? So all I knew when I started out was... I have a quailfish and I want to use it, right? So we have Aqua Tail and Ice Beam because that seems to be the best current coverage into the meta. And in like in addition to this, right, like when you're dealing with poison types, typically the dark types go well. And I have a Shadow Sableye with the buff power gem. I just wanted to try it out, right? You could certainly get away with using a different dark type, like maybe Mandibuzz or you know, another dark type that you enjoy, maybe even Pangoro if you want to get a little spicier, right? That 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 slot can be any dark type that you think will do well here and also as the closer because we're just you know little standard abb sort of team i threw the talk specs in here because i got a little inspiration from home slice henry's video when he used his shadow sableye talk specs core and i was already using quillfish so talk specs just kind of made sense as a fit here we went really solid with this team i had an eight and two run in the two sets that i played with it and i want to show this team off because quillfish is just it's so it's so it's so good i can't even state it man we get an Azumarill lead in the first game. This is really, really bad. We're going to immediately swap into the Quillfish, and the opponent makes a very quick swap. But they come with a Bullet Seed Breed, which I've seen quite an increasing number of, not even just from the other, uh, yesterday when I played these games, but also just as we're climbing through the ranks at the moment. I've seen several Bullet Seed Greedens, which is probably the preferred moveset for it now. They're going to go for a Trailblaze here. I know that I never have to shield the first move, and I'm just going to go straight Aqua Tails. I considered going for an Ice Beam here just to try and maybe take them off guard, but I figure at this point there's a higher chance that they'll shield anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw the Aqua Tails. And they're going to go ahead and shield once, and I'm still I'm still sitting here with a shield, right? Two shields, I only have to spend them now. I'm actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to Poison Sting down for Switch Advantage. I will shield twice because being able to put Tox Effects on the Azumarill is just a game-winning sort of move if the thing that is in the back can be managed by the Sableye. So far, the opponents had two, three, two Pokemon that are good into my Sableye, and there's number three. They have a Greedon, they have an Azumarill, and they have a Mandibuzz, so my Quillfish is still firing off charge moves here, and it's just doing all the work by itself. Quillfish has been on the field for the, almost the entire game at this point. Honestly, it has been. There hasn't even been anything else on the field. Now, I could have gone for a second Ice Beam, but I kind of panicked and threw the Aqua Tail there, maybe hoping that the opponent wasn't keeping track of my energy, but also maybe, you know, that I might get, you know, be able to get the other shield, right? So, no. Yeah, no, they shielded. I'm not kidding. I just I just saw them shield. What am I talking about? Right, anyway, so I bring in my Sableye here, and I recognize that I can just use my Toxapex to win this game. As soon as my opponent sees it, they surrender. We just put a Toxapex, right? Whenever you see an alignment play like that, you want to make it, right? You can put Toxapex on something that's dominant into, like a Zoomeral. That's always a play to make for to go for Switch. Now, we see... A fairly neutral matchup, and the reason why I call it neutral is Shadow Sableye does not, mine at least, doesn't have an amazing amount of bulk. If you have a rank 1 Shadow Sableye, it's probably fine. I can actually use this time maybe to talk about my Sableye's IVs, right? I know that this Claude Sire is devastating for my backline, so I'm going to try to invest my, my matchup here instead of doing like a swap to try to catch. Now, my opponent and I swap immediately, but they're going to come in with the for alligator. But it's going back to the Sableye here. Um, I chose a higher attack weight because it does more damage with the Shadow Claws into more things. And this was also built several seasons ago. I think I built it like maybe two or three seasons ago. So that's just the IV spread that I took. But you certainly don't have to play one like this. You could do a rank, you know, high ranked one if you want. Also enables you to use it as a safe swap pretty effectively. Mine is kind of locked into being a lead here at this point. But Quillfish is going to be able to wall the energy here as most for alligators are not running crunch but i'm actually going to go for a shield here and i'm going to try to be able to get the opponent to give me their shield but they actually swap into the clod sire hoping to maybe catch an aqua tail i'm actually going to quickly swap in my sable i need the stone and the opponent looked like we're trying to fire off a stone edge into my quillfish to get my second shield but now quillfish gets a full poison sting farm down and boy you thought the energy on this thing was going to be good before watch this mandibuzz is in the back and that's kind of what i'm reading with this team because when you see a clod sire in the lead 90% of the time, you're most likely going to see a Mandibuzz of some kind in the back, right? It's going to be Mandibuzz, or it could be another Flyer. Now, we're able to go for two Poison Stings and then go for the Ice Beam. I'm just going to throw it because it's super effective damage, and I just want to get this damage off. 
two shields with the ice beams, and now we come in with the Toxapex. The only thing that I have to be careful of here is a potential catch. If I land a Sludge Wave, I'm very close to being in farm range where I can throw a Brine at this thing, but the opponent does have that low HP for Alligator in the back. I also don't remember exactly how much energy it had, but I know that I should be able to poison jab it down as long as they didn't have more than, I think, three, two or three Shadow Claws in, in, uh, in their stored energy. So we're going to be able to go for the Sludge Wave. One of the important things when you're trying to make sure you don't get a move caught on you is if your move is shorter, your fast move is shorter than the opponent's, and you go for one, and then you see their animation begin, like I see the beginning of the Snarl animation, I know that I can go ahead and just um, throw it because they're not going to be able to swap out and catch. The opponent concedes after the failed attempt to catch. I did see it coming, so I just kind of kept farming. But also, if I threw on alignment there, that was one the only time that they would have had to catch. So we get a decent lead here with the Alolan Marowak, Shadow Alolan Marowak, the goat himself, here to bless us with his pleasant, bless us with his presence, bless us with his pleasance. That's, <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be in the comments later. Like, oh my goodness. So we're gonna go for the foul play here, try to get a shield back from this thing. Uh, the damage from Fire Spin has been buffed, so this matchup is not great. Plus, because of the damage from um, the uh, Bone Club also. I'm actually going to let this go and try to go for an aggressive farm down on my Quillfish here. Now, the opponent is going to stay in and let me get this farm down, and I think that that might be dangerous for him because Quillfish's energy is incredibly good. They actually come in with a Quagsire. Now, I'm not sure why they didn't swap out. I'm assuming that what they have in the back here is weak to Sableye, uh, but hopefully that also means that maybe Toxapex does okay. I don't know. We're going to have to see what they have, but if it's a Ghost type, I'm in a bad way. But they had a Ghost in the lead. Now, I shield up because I'm assuming that they're going to throw a Stone Edge at me. They had enough energy, at least I fought for it. Or even a Mud Bomb, even. I had to be careful. I needed to see if they had Aqua Tail, basically. Now, I swapped to catch a move, which is, once again, I'm expecting to be the uh, Stone Edge. But they go for another Aqua Tail, even though my shields are down. So I was kind of confused by this particular play. But the opponent's firing up a bunch of energy, and they come in with a Shinotic. So they actually had two better answers in the back, specific, uh, supposedly to the Sableye, so I'm kind of curious as to why they didn't swap out. Maybe they just, you know, wanted to play it out with the Marowak. Maybe they just wanted to see if they won the game. But now that I get all this energy, I can throw a Brine into this Quagsire and force them to throw. But by forcing them to throw, it means that they probably don't have the energy unless they throw Aqua Tail. Maybe it's a single-moved Quagsire. I don't know. But I have to assume that it's double move just because that's, you know, what we got to do here. And we're able to farm down after landing the Brine, but I would have had the Aqua Tail or Ice Beam loaded anyway, so that was a good game. Getting into the next game against another Azumarill here. I'm going to swap immediately into my Quillfish and try to make some magic happen. I'm aiming for alignment if I can get it because Toxapex into Azumarill is just amazing and they come in with a Registeel. And I want y'all to watch this matchup. The opponent gave me about six or so Poison Sings of Advantage. We're already at the third Aqua Tail almost, and also Quillfish is a perfect Pokemon to start really taking advantage of the new Switch timer that's gone down from 60 to 50 seconds. We've gotten three Aqua Tails off thanks to the opponent's energy lead that they gave us, and I could swap right now if I want to. Like, I'm I, al I almost can swap. I'm considering maybe swapping to catch a move on Sableye, but I'm like, you know what? I probably shouldn't. I'm just going to go for the uh, dedicate to this matchup here. We can easily fire off Aqua Tails much quicker than the opponent can get to their Zap Cannons. And so Quillfish is going to be able to flip switch here if I needed to. Now, the opponent does go for another move here. I unfortunately did not expect them to get to a move that quickly. I was probably not keeping. When you throw all those charge moves, I'm just not keeping good count. Now, my opponent swaps immediately into a Swampert here, and the reason why I bring in my Sableye is obviously because I don't want it lined up against my Toxapex, but I want to save the energy on Quillfish because I also know that they have an Azumarill in the lead. So this team is not only incredibly weak to Venusaur, but we also get clapped by a Earthquake. Boom! But I got the shield off the Swampert, and that's what matters, because look, I'm already two Aqua Tails. Quillfish has so much energy, I'm able to get to these... Aqua Tails, rise to occasion, would be so proud of me. Quill God shining through the heavens. Aqua Tailing down a Swampert. And also, we've got the Toxapex for the Azumarill. The opponent comes in with their Azumarill. And we also have the Toxapex. I'm going to catch a move here. Unintentional, honestly. Um, but I know that the Registeel is going to come back in. I'm basically hoping that I can get to a Brine before they throw the Red... Uh, but I'm like, I So I wanted to try and get to this Brine before, but then I realized how low they were getting, and I'm like, I'm just going to commit to the farm down and throw a sludge wave at the Azumarill, so I needed to slow it down, because I could feel my mouth trying to move, and my brain was like, I do that once in a while, just 
is what it is. So Sludge Wave into the Azumarill here after catching that move is going to be nearly lethal. That is going to do a ton of damage for our Toxapex. We'll give it to him. And that's going to be a good game here. Well played. So now we're getting into the next battle here. We got Sableye on lead versus a Gastrodon. Obviously, with the ground typing and fast move damage of this Gastrodon, I cannot let it near my back row. So we're going to go for a foul play here on the Shadow Sableye. This should do a pretty good amount of damage. I'm hoping the opponent shields it, quite honestly, but they let it go. And then they come in with an Orangaroo, and I make a massive mistake. And I'm sure you guys have done it plenty yourselves. Just automatically tap on something by reflex without actually noticing what you're doing. Yeah, I made that mistake. I I bring in my Quillfish. I should have just stayed in with my Sableye. That would have been the safest play to make. I stay in with my Sableye because we're double resisting the confusion damage and forcing them to go for um to go for brutal swings, trailblazers, right? Like the pacing on confusion is not great for them. So now I have to double shield because of the full farm down I gave them on my quillfish. And now I have to see if I can find a way to make make something happen in this game. So I'm gonna over farm by a bit. Gonna go for three shadow claws because I'm not sure if they're on one confusion or down at zero after throwing that move because I'm honestly, I wasn't paying attention. Here's the Wigglytuff. Yay, Wigglytuff. So I come in with my Toxapex and the Gastronon is low. But they have a move, and if they throw the Earth Power, it's pretty much over because they still have a shield here, and it's the Earth Power. That's going to do enough damage. My brine is not going to matter. I'm throwing on bad timing because at, at the time when I played this game, I actually forgot they had a shield. So they shield, and they just farm down, and then they win. So good game. Hard countered. Not really much that I could have done in this game, unfortunately. Uh, the only thing that I could really think of is if I had stayed in with my Sableye, I had a much better shot at winning this game because at some point I probably would have put my Quillfish on the Gastrodon and we would have had um, picking up a 4-1 set there as I hit the transition. We got Whiskash in the next game. I would have been able to put Tox Specs on the Wigglytuff. That's where the, the brain is going there. Uh, so now Mudshot does slightly more damage, but generates less energy in the season. So Mud Bomb is going to be straight five, and Scald, I believe, is six. I don't know if it's six or seven. It's probably six, uh, but I'm just going to assume that it's you know more than they're throwing. So Foul Play is going to get a shield off of the opposing Whiskash. And again, just like all the other Mud Boy leads in that I've seen so far, I'm going to commit to this matchup with Sableye because even though the Mud Shots are doing a fairly good amount of damage, they aren't going to be able to fully farm me down before I get to another Foul Play. So Foul Play is going to get the second shield off of this Whiskash, and they're not able to get the farm down. And we're going to be able to get this uh, Foul Play off and take out the Whiskash. Hopefully the hardest answer that they have to this team. They have a Scrafty and they have an Air Slash Scrum. So this is probably just... Just a trainer who's kind of playing whatever they've got maybe isn't really up to date with the most uh, meta move sets on Pokemon or they're just trying air slash Skarmory because they know that the um, they know that steel wing got buff but they're basically they're playing all Pokemon they got nerfed so maybe they're trying to give themselves a challenge but you can see Quillfish is just making a statement against this Skarmory saying you know what even though you're not running steel wing anymore I am going to destroy this bird and that's okay because we don't like Skarmory anymore. Skarmory needs to be buried in the RPS tomb that it came from. So the Aqua Tail is going to be enough to knock out. We're going to go for Aqua Tails here. The opponent is running a Scrafty with counter. And I know that they did not go up to six counters. And that can only be a power up punch. So I'm okay, obviously, with taking this damage. I know I'm going to live it because it's a pop. It's a pop. It's not a thunder punch. They would have built up. They had to build up. I think I don't I don't remember if counter now is six or seven of the thunder punches. I have I have not paid too much attention to the move counts from the old moves anymore. Um, I probably should, but we see the Toxapex here and the opponent concedes. That's a good game. In the next game, we have a Shadow for Alligator. I'm actually going to go into my Quillfish right away here because even though the Shadow Claws hurt, the opponent is forced to swap out because their energy is going to be walled by the Quillfish. So now, I don't really know what I need to do here exactly. I'm still working through it in my head, trying to figure out if I can go for Switch here or if um, if I just need to go for like some sort of farm down with Sableye, right? There's two ways I can go about this. I can get a bunch of energy on my Sableye and try to out muscle the, um, or out energy the opponent also baiting with a fire punch, the absolute gall of this opponent to do so. <laughs> but I know that if I put my Toxapex onto the Feraligator and shields are down, 
we're in a good situation. Now, the opponent makes a nice swap to catch a move here. Um, however, I think that giving up alignment for them was definitely the worst thing they could have done is now I can bank a move and try to catch a move on my uh, Toxapex, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I remember that they had two Shadow Claws before they swapped. So they needed three more to get to the move, and we are going to try to go for a full farm down of this for Alligator. I don't know if it's going to be five or six after this. We're going to see how it looks. I'm okay with throwing a Brine if I have to in order to negate the energy, but we're going to get a perfect five Poison Jab farm down on the Feraligator, and that means that we are going to be able to throw Brines into the opponent's Diggersby if it comes back in, but they come in with an Obama Snow, and the Obama Snow, something I respect in this season because it honestly does pretty well into the meta, but they have to shield it, and then in comes the Diggersby. And at this point, I have a thought of, can I farm this down? with my Sableye. So we're going to come in with the Sableye, and I'm going to eat one move here because I know that the best thing they're going to be able to hit me with is Scorching Sands, which is not going to do enough to be a knockout here. And I'm going for the full farm down of this thing. And I'm going to Power Gem the Obama Snow because I want to know how much it does. Honestly, at this point, though, I'm also fine with just letting this go because I know it's a Fire Punch. They actually didn't farm up enough Quick Attacks for the... Um, for the uh for the scorching sand so i'm gonna go for it power gem Boom! buffed and we're saying goodbye to poor obama snow good game to the opponent power gem also has gotten buffed that's why we're so keen on playing the save lie here so in this match, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw six Shadow Claws and then swap into Quillfish to attempt to catch the Aqua Tail on my Quillfish. But unfortunately, the opponent sees it coming and they continue farming. Very nicely done by this opponent here. And they're going to go for a potential Thunder Punch. Now, I was expecting, I was not expecting power up, but the opponent now comes in and hard counters me with a Feral Thorn. But the nice thing here is that we have drawn out the Feral Thorn and we also have a Foul Play loaded on the uh, Sableye if we need to dispatch of this thing. Getting rid of Ferrothorn, honestly, is priority number one because Toxapex is in the back. The opponent actually goes for Thunder, and I'm wondering if they're running a spicy moveset of Thunder and maybe Mirror Shot or Flash Cannon. You definitely do want to be running Power Whip on your Ferrothorn. I'm not sure why they didn't go for the Power Whip. Maybe they thought, you know, like, uh, Electric is super effective, and since Grass is neutral, they knew that the Thunder would be good for a knockout. Maybe, um, but I'm actually going to go for the cap tie here. I actually thought they would throw before that. So since they didn't throw, I'm going to throw on my third poison sting and get rid of this feral thorn. Thankfully, the opponent over farming and I'm going to reach for that ice beam and we're going to get it. Is the opponent going to shield this damage or are we going to take it out? Quillfish flexing Boom! and the opponent's got a crocolore in the back. We can just show them the Toxapex, but I'm going to go for a cheeky little power gem first here to get that final shield just to solidify the winning position that we've put ourselves in here and try to catch a move if I, I think that they were on three there. Try to catch a move here on the Toxapex, but the opponent over farms goes for their crunch. It's just not going to be even close to enough. One brine with the poison jabs probably would have been enough, and that's a good game. Well played. Love the crockle or Spice. All right, we're getting into the next battle. We've got another Gastrodon on the lead here, staying in with Sableye because we have to, but Sableye is going to do well into this thing, honestly. There are certain spreads of Shadow Sableye that can actually take the, uh, the Gastrodon matchup entirely. Now, if you call a Body Slam, usually you're in a very good position here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shield because I don't I don't want to risk it, right? If they throw Earth Power, then I'm going to have a hard time farming this down, but I shield with Body Slam and it just... You ever get that feeling like when you throw... Like the opponent throws a really like... It makes sense for them to throw the Body Slam. I know in this case, they didn't get up to the uh, energy for the Earth Power, so I let it go. But, like, you ever, like, they throw, like, the Bubble Beam or the Acid Spray, and you shield it, and you just, you feel your blood boiling in your head. That was me. Um, so the opponent now has a Dugong. I'm going to throw my Power Gem, and thankfully, I'm going to be able to get the, uh, get the, get that to land here. Now, the opponent's staying in with their Dugong here. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe they shield this. Them not swapping out here is fine with me. Because now what I can hopefully do is go for a nice uh, farm down. The opponent has a Talon Flame. And unfortunately, that move is going to knock me out here. That Incinerate's going to knock me out. And now, I don't have uh, the health on my Sableye to last either. So, I have to finish this game with the Toxapex. But thankfully, we were at least able to get one shield from the opponent. The important thing for me to remember here in this game is that... Um, the opponent can try to catch on the dugong the dugong does not have the energy so as long as i can get the talon flame out of the way the dugong should be pretty simply uh just food for me now my opponent does go ahead 
and uh, go for a nice over farm here. I was expecting him to catch at this point, which is why I continued to throw instead of just throwing the move. But I do shield the second move. Now, if they'd gone for another flame charge here and then gone for the fly, I probably would have been in trouble. But the opponent instant switches expecting me to throw, and I go for the move because the reason why it's important for me to kind of explain this, right? Because we can always go, especially because they threw back-to-back -back moves, that means they don't have another charge move. So we can always go for at least one or two poison jabs and throw the brine without them being able to catch. So going for the poison jab there is what you want to do in that situation if you're not in a position where, you know, you would get knocked out. And even then, you can still go for one and then the move if the incinerate would knock you out. So getting into the next game here, Sableye into an Obama Snow. Okay, not a great lead, but we're gonna sit here and see what we can do. I'm gonna go ahead and stay in for just a bit here, and I should have probably swapped out. But my opponent and I immediately swap out, and now I'm like, man, it's good that I'm avoiding this Dunsparce. But what does this trainer do against Machamp? I have to wonder. But anyway. Quillfish is going to be able to survive, hopefully, one drill run here. Now, what I'm going to try to do, see if I can't get the two more Aqua Tails, but the opponent's rollout damage plus those drill runs is adding up, and I won't be able to get the two moves, I don't think. If I can live one more rollout, maybe? No. Not going to be able to get there. Now I'm in a very, very hard spot. I basically have to come up with my Sableye and immediately throw the Foul Play that I had stored, which means now that I don't have the energy to deal with the Obama Snow, we're going to have to see what they've got in the back to deal with my Toxapex. So I'm going to go ahead and just no shield this, and I'm going to let Toxapex with two shields. If it wins, great, and if it doesn't, then whatever. But now the opponent going to come in with a Gastrodon. I've been hard countered in the back, and there's nothing I can do about it. So good game to the opponent here. Absolutely nothing I can do. But we're able to go 4-1 at least in the dust set, which is always nice to see and climbing up to rank 11. So hopefully, you know, you guys have the confidence now to try out Quillfish. In all of these games, it was definitely the star of the show. It was putting in so much work, taking out so many po opposing Pokemon, sometimes even taking out half the team all by itself, just on the safe swap when we've lost a lead, right? So as long as you can keep the Mud Boys and the Orangaroos away from your Quillfish, it's going to do very well. And it also does well to bait those things out. Because as you saw, even in the Orangaroo matchup, the opponent did end up having to put Shield down, which you may end up seeing a lot of the time with quillfish especially if the opponent doesn't have a quick answer to it so that's all for me for today guys thank you very much for watching we're gonna catch you guys in the next one bye bye